Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to the sheep pen. Bah! No goats allowed. <laughs> so what does it mean to be a sheep? Well, many of you who've been following me all along know that uh, the sheep and goat reference is in reference to the judgment, uh, the Jesus judgment, where he says, you know, I never knew you because when I was sick, you didn't visit me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. Um, the you know you're familiar with that reference. If not, go back and find the videos on it. I've been talking about it for a long time. But what else does it mean to be a sheep? You know, I call this thing the sheep pen. What does that mean? And so I wanted to read to you the 23rd Psalm because to me it captures what it means to be a sheep. And uh, there's a lot of derogatory statements about sheep, like uh, they they call a sheeple. If you that, that means you're gullible. You'll just go wherever you're told to go or think whatever you're told to think. And honestly, I feel like even though some righteous uh, people who are on our side use that analogy, I think that analogy is straight from hell. <laughs> I think it's the devil's analogy because he wants you to think like a goat. He wants you to uh, be so independent-minded that you can't listen to the prompting and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right, they're trying to drive you away from the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So um, I want to focus on, and you know, I don't talk about the Old Testament much, but one of the things that I find really beautiful about the Old Testament is the Psalms and the Proverbs. And it's wisdom and, and beautiful poetry, and it's all very, uh, it's just good stuff. It's, it's uh, human expression from the soul, right? And so I really love the 23rd Psalm, it's a Psalm of David, and you guys know that if I had to uh, if I had to align myself with an Old Testament character, I'm probably more like David than any of the other uh, Old Testament characters. And uh, But anyway, not that that matters, it's just uh, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be, <laughs> right? 
but I want to read from the 23rd Psalm. It's a, a psalm that's given comfort to a lot of people. It's sometimes read to people who are sick or dying or who are going off into battle. But to me, it captures what it means to be spirit-led, what it means to walk in the paths of righteousness is a phrase that's from here. And I want to kind of delve into what it means to be a sheep and how we, it doesn't mean that you uh, can't think for yourself. It doesn't mean that you're a, a blind follower. It means that you blindly follow Jesus and you blindly follow this, the Holy Spirit's guidance. Uh, just, like a sh just like a shepherd, he's our good shepherd. I mean, that's what pastor means. It means a keeper of the sheep, the shepherd. Uh, the person who guides. So uh, let's read from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, sh I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If I had to build doctrine on the Old Testament, that's the one I'd pick. It's like the whole thing's there. Like the whole promise of Christ is there. The whole promise of, of supernatural guidance and care is there. It's promises, right? Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, I get a little teary-eyed. But I want to go through each one of those. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So there's a lot of talk about prosperity messages, prosperity ministry. You know, all these people, that, the name it, claim it crowd, the Kenneth Copeland bunch. Um, but... They kind of base it on some of these promises. And I talk about this to some degree, but just I don't put the emphasis on it, right? But there is something about being led by a shepherd, right? There's something about surrendering to God's will for your life and seeing him as the divine guidance in your life and seeking that divine guidance that makes it so that you shall not want like you're just going to get taken care of if you can master that basic thing. Make the Lord your shepherd. Make the Lord uh, follow the Holy Spirit's guidance in your life. Learn to tap into that supernatural guidance and you'll never be in want of anything. And it's some it's a theme of this channel that goes all the way back to the beginning when a lot of people were trying to give me money and I was doing okay in life and I had other sources of income then I would just tell you no. Give your money to somebody who needs it. Like, I don't need it because God takes care of me. Don't worry about me. God takes care of me. And then when this started to become uh, more the focus of what I do and I've been uh, sort of being led back to ministry, now you are helping me out. You are helping provide for me so that I'm not in want. And so God will use whatever method is uh, fits him to make sure that you are not in want, right? Because he'll make you to lie down beside green pastures or lie down in green pastures green pastures is uh, does represent everything you need in life uh, your health your uh, financial stability right um, your life is better if you lie down in green pastures instead of in a, some rocky place where there is nothing to eat right so it's all uh, an analogy I mean an allegory so he leads me beside the still waters well, if you're a sheep, you can't get a drink from the water if the water is rushing, like uh, coming out of a water cannon. Like, you need still water next to a green pasture so you can come and get down in the water and get what you need. So this is all about God providing for you. But also, now we kind of leave the sheep analogy, and it just says, He restores my soul. So when you walk in these paths of righteousness, when you let the Holy Spirit lead you, when you let the Lord be your shepherd, then it's there's something restorative about about it. It restores your soul when you let go and let God, when you can learn to be a spirit walker and walk after things of the spirit and trust God in his guidance and tap into that Holy Spirit connection. It restores your soul. It heals. Restore means to heal or to bring back into God's original intent. Right? There's a, a healing prayer that I say where I 
I command my body to come back into alignment with God's original intent. Restoration, right? So, restoring your soul is healing of emotional hurt, restore, restoration of, of, of damaged parts of you, right? Whether it's physical or emotional, but the soul really speaks to your heart, you know, your soul, heart and soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Now, this has been preached incorrectly, if you ask me. For a long time, this has been preached incorrectly. Righteousness does not mean holiness. Those are not synonymous. Righteousness means doing what is right. Now, well, they say, well, to live a sinless life is to do what is right. Well, to do what is right is to do what you're told. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. This just goes right back to the Lord is my shepherd, right? I shall not want. He maketh me. He leads me. He restores me. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. What is righteousness but walking in God's purpose for your life? Making right decisions. Going down the right pathway. This is just another way of saying the right pathway. The paths of righteousness or the correct path for your life. Fulfilling your purpose for your life. Letting God lead you into your righteous path or purpose for your life. It does not mean... Uh, holding up in a cave somewhere so that you can live a sinless life that is not fulfilling your purpose your purpose is not to live a sinless life your purpose is to follow God's righteous path for your life right right get it right righteous right it's the right path make the right uh, straighten out and turn right <laughs> all right um he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I won't get into that one. That's a whole other study. I don't uh, go far from the the uh, from the reservation concerning that one line. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So, a rod or a staff uh, are basically the tools of a shepherd. The staff he uses to guide you, to point you in the right direction, to grab that little hook on the end of the staff and pull you in, rein you in. Uh, he gives you guidance. So you know you're not going to fall for an evil plot against you, right? Because the Lord's with you and his rod is guiding you, right? His staff is giving you comfort because you know you're being guided by God. Your his rod and his your rod and your staff. What is a rod, and what's the difference between a rod and a staff? It's not synonyms. It's not two descriptions of the same thing. The staff is for guiding you. A rod is a club. A rod is a mace. A rod is a self-defense weapon. So let's say he comes up on a situation where there's a wolf trying to come in after your lamb. Well, he might reach up with his staff and pull the pull the uh, lamb back out of the way. And then in the other hand, he's got the rod. And the rod he uses to club the wolf and make it back off and get away. So a rod is a weapon and a staff is a form of guidance, right? That that's his, these, are, these are shepherd tools. So you're comforted, comforted knowing that God's got your back and can defend you against these predators, these demons, this evil that it speaks of that I will fear no evil because you are with me because you have this rod so he protects us with his club right but also he has a staff to guide us back from the danger zone and to separate us from these uh, enemies this evil that attacks us and then you've heard me talk about this scripture as well you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and when I did the research and the study on that one phrase, it paints this amazing picture of this medieval-style battle going on all around you. That's what it means to be in the presence of your enemies. It means there's a war. You're in the middle of a war zone. People are getting clubbed, beaten, cut, chopped, smashed, strangled. It's just blood and guts all around you. But in the middle of this... The Lord prepares a table and we have this feast. Imagine a fancy feast at the king's table. You know, uh, the the uh, the imagery from uh, The Grinch Stole Christmas. You know, the fatted beast. 
right? The, uh, the, the roasted duck, you know, 15 kinds of meat, desserts, all this stuff, this abundance. Once again, it's, it's even though there's this chaos going around you, you are in this bubble, in the middle of this war, having a feast with Jesus. He prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemy, right? He anoints my head with oil. What does that mean? It means that he chooses you. He chooses you. He, he blesses you. He puts his mark on you. He anoints you. He gives to you. And it's like a protection. And this is just more promises. Your cup runs over. Surely, surely, goodness. Uh, I used to think, what is surely goodness? And who, who is she? Is she a, a, a movie star, surely goodness? No, is that like, uh, never mind. Anyway, but no, surely, comma, goodness and mercy shall follow me. So goodness and mercy become like a way of life for me. They follow me everywhere I go. Goodness and mercy. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's about being in his, in his kingdom, being in his presence, being in good standing with God. So what does it mean to be a sheep? It means that you are looking to be led by the Holy Spirit. You are willing to yield to his guidance. That you're not afraid of his correction, you embrace his correction. You're looking for his righteous, righteous path for your life or the right path for your life. Your calling, your purpose, your future. Another scripture says he has for you a future and a hope. A, hope, a future and a hope. There is a plan for your life. And that's part of being a sheep is listening to the voice of God so you know the difference between somebody who really could use a handout and somebody who's just a user trying to stand there with their hand out. It's knowing the difference between giving somebody a hand up and, giving, and making somebody dependent upon you so that you can control them or tell them what to do. I mean, finding this fine threaded path of doing the right thing in every circumstance in life. Following the law of love requires this shepherd guidance to take you down the righteous path of love. To weed around your own goat instincts, to look out for number one, to resist being led. You know, goats have to be driven. They can't be led. Sheep will just follow the shepherd. Once they learn to trust the shepherd, they just follow him. Goats, on the other hand, have to be threatened and pushed and poked and prodded. The rod that you use to protect the sheep when you're dealing with goats, you got to crack them in the horns and get them moving because they are resistant to being led by the Spirit. So this is what it means to be a sheep. It means to be a spirit walker. It means to put one foot in front of the other and pursue God's righteous plan for your life which doesn't mean you have to live a perfect life or be a perfect Christian. It just means you're listening. And, you, and it says in another scripture that it says that his sheep know his voice. So learn to know the voice of God. Learn to know Jesus when he's calling you. Learn to follow the Holy Spirit when the wind of the Spirit blows, right? Know which direction to go. Listen for those subtle cues. You know, a good sheepdog can move sheep around just by making a facial expression. That these sheep know the sheepdog so good, and they get trained so good that the sheepdog can go like this, turn, look where he wants them to go, and go, hmm, and they move on right on out. They do what they know what to do. They get trained. We need to be trained by the Holy Spirit, trained by that Jesus uh, guidance, that shepherd guidance, not fight God for control of our lives. Jesus, take the wheel. No, Jesus, you drive. I'm, I'm going to sit in the passenger seat and let you have the wheel. You know, you, Jesus, don't need to take the wheel because he's already the pilot of my life. He is my shepherd. I shall not want because he leadeth me to green pastures. He maketh me to lie down beside the still waters. And in this process, my soul is restored and I am healed. If anyone is teaching you anything different, then submission to Jesus. Then submission to 
Not the law, not submitting to the law, not submitting to what the church tells you you're supposed to be or how you're supposed to act, but submitting to that Holy Ghost guidance in your life. That just listening for that still small voice picking up on that cue. Not falling for the distractions in this life, not falling for the human emotions, not letting the fear grip you, but being comforted by the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the protection that being a sheep and being submitted to a shepherd brings. Sheep can't defend themselves against the powers of darkness. But when they have that shepherd, they can rest and be at peace and know that there is somebody who's got their back and looking out for them. I want you to know today that submission to his will for your life is everything. If you're chasing the almighty dollar, if you're trying to make a point, if you're living a life based on revenge, if you're trying to show them a thing or two, right? If your life is that of conflict and there is no peace or rest, it's because you are not submitted to the light. You haven't made the decision to follow the righteous lit path that you know is correct. You haven't learned to listen to that still small voice. You are an untrained wild sheep. <laughs> you need to let him lead you and guide you and comfort you. And you do that by communing with him, by being hyper aware that he is there, by drawing close to God and resisting the devil and resisting your own instincts at times and making your instinct, your emotional, spiritual instinct to follow Jesus the priority listen for his guidance and be bold to go where he says to go don't be afraid to get out ahead of him right listen for that leadership and guidance you shouldn't have to be driven to follow God he shouldn't have to use that staff on you because it can hurt when he wraps that staff around your neck and gives you a jerk and goes no this way sheep <laughs> so it's kind of better to be aware of what is coming keep your eye on Jesus, right? Listen for that still small voice. Cultivate that alone time with him so that you can be guided by the shepherd and not be in want of anything. This is where I get my confidence to say, God takes care of me. And on that note, he uses y'all to take care of me. If you're being fed by this ministry, if you're getting something from it, please help support this ministry, which is basically at this point, uh, supporting me. I'm, I'm bringing in just enough to survive on a very small budget and I live very low. Uh, not a fancy man at all. As you can see, I don't even have carpeting. I have plywood floors, right? I don't even have a proper stove. So you're just keeping the lights on and I appreciate that. And uh, God's using you to take care of me. And, and uh, I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful to every one of you that supports this ministry. And I'm trying to be a good steward of my time I'm spending a lot of time in study a lot of time in prayer and fasting i spend a lot of time interacting with many of you in the comment section through email phone calls and sometimes in-person visits and so um i i want you to know that i do appreciate you but continue your tithing if you're not a tither consider tithing to this ministry if you're being fed by it and i'm going to continue to keep bringing these messages to you and sharing this truth that i've spent a lifetime uh, uncovering for myself and now um, what I have I freely give so give back if you can PayPal in the description PO Box 92 Sparks Oklahoma Oklahoma 74869 Sageland 2019 at Outlook.com we can talk we can chat and uh, you can definitely help a brother out we'll see you next time on the sheep pen all right may the Lord bless and keep you may his face shine upon you May he bless you in everything you do, and may you be immersed in his peace. In Jesus' name. See you next time. I was hungry. You made sure.